Hi, in this video, I'll cover how to do a two sample t test with unequal variances. In this example, let's say we have a list of male and female test subjects, and they have these average scores, and we want to know if the average test scores between females and males differ significantly. So here's a sample of test scores. Uh, and we, that's, our, that's going to be our alternative hypothesis. We're saying that they differ significantly. So when we do our hypothesis setup, what we're saying is for our null hypothesis is we're saying that the average of the females should equal the average of the males. But our alternative hypothesis, we're saying that they should not average. We're saying that they differ significantly. So we're going to use an alpha of 0.05. Now the easiest way to do this is to use the data analysis feature in Excel. So I have in Excel under data, go to data analysis. This is something that you can enable. Just Google data analysis tool pack, uh, enable Excel, and you should probably find instructions on how to do that. But once I click on that, we're going to have an option to do our test. And this is going to be the t-test. And you can see there's a couple options here. So we have two samples, we're doing two samples here, male and female, but there are two here. There's one with equal and one with unequal. So how do we know which one to choose? As I mentioned before, I'm doing one that is considering unequal, but how do we know what to choose? Let's just put both of them in. So let's go choose the equal one here. And our variable range, first variable range is here. Second variable range is male, C3 to C15. And they do have labels. My output range, let's put it here in cell F3. Click OK. And we have our equal variances. Let's just do that for our unequal variances. Go back to data analysis. And we'll choose the unequal variance one here. Click on that. Click OK. Variable range 1, B2 to B11 or B3 to B11, and then C3 to C15 for the second variable has labels. My output range, let's put this under here. We'll put it under F21. Click OK. And you see that the means and variances and the observations are the same, but everything after that, there are going to be some differences, right? So as I mentioned before, this is a two-sample t-test for unequal variances. But I have both here, equal variances and unequal variances. How do I know which one to use? Well, we're going to use the F statistic to help us figure that out. Now, the F statistic, the formula for that, is basically the larger of the two variances divided by the smaller of the two the, the smaller one. So you can see that the variance here for male is larger, larger than the female. So we have to compare that F statistic versus the F critical value. Fortunately, in Excel, there is also a function for that, or it's part of the data analysis tool pack, where we have our F test to sample for variances. When I click on OK there, I can, let's say I already have data in here, so let me take that out. Look at my larger one first. Let's look at the male and put the inputs in for the female, the female data. And my output range, J3, I selected that earlier. Let's put it in J3. We'll keep it in J3. Click OK. And now you see here we're looking at our F value. And we'll compare that to our F critical value. And you see that it's larger than, it's larger than our critical value. So the F value is larger than our critical value. It tells us that we have unequal variances. So we're going to use the unequal variances here. Now based on that, we can say, okay, our data is here now. We have our t-stat, which is 3.269, and this is a two-tailed test. So our critical value for a two-tailed test here is outlined at 213. So that is telling us that we would reject our null hypothesis. And we're saying that uh, there, th this is not random. Uh, the test scores do differ significantly, so we need to look into that. Now, with the data analysis tool pack, it makes it really nice and easy to figure out our t-test here. But if we wanted to challenge ourselves, I've got an area here where we can figure out the calculations based on the formulas. So my t-stat formula is here. That's going to give us our t-stat value. 
I separated out from the numerator and the denominator, and we're going to calculate that out. So the numerator, we're looking at the mean of x minus the mean of y. So our value is here, right? So we're looking at our mean of this value minus that value, right? That gives us 10. So our denominator is the calculations of the square variance over the observations or the summation of those or for our set our data set here. So I can put in square root, open parentheses, the variance. I'm going to use the output from the F test. The variance divided, let's move our little tip here. Oops, let's move this little thing here. Let me hover over it and move that over. So it's going to be, let's delete that. So it'll be the first variance divided by the observation, close parentheses, and then we got, we're going to add the second variance divided over their observations. And that's going to, oops, forgot to close that parentheses. Excel was nice enough to do that for us. Click yes. And that gives us a value of 3.05. And now our t stat is going to be equal to the numerator divided by the denominator. I can't see that, but let's, it's L20. And that gives us 3.269, which is our number here. How do I find my critical value? Well, the critical value is you can get that from a function called t.inv. This is a two tailed test. Our probability is 0.05 because that's what we're using for our alpha. The degrees of freedom, that's going to be based off of this value here. So I'm going to put that there, and we're going to figure out the function for the degrees of freedom. So that, it looks like a very complex formula, but it's not that bad. It's a little bit, that's why it's easier to have it done here with the unequal variances. Excel's nice enough to do that for us. So we need to figure out the degrees of freedom. So, so the numerator is going to be our variance divided by the observation plus the other variance divided by, oops, let me put that in parentheses, also, oops, click, click on the variance, also divided by the observations, close parentheses, and that has to be squared. See? So I'm going to square that, but I'm going to close it into another set of parentheses. And that needs to be squared. Caret squared. That gives us a value of 87.458. Our denominator is that those values down there. So we're going to say S2 minus or, or our variance for the first one value divided by the observations. That needs to be squared. And we're going to divide that by the observations, minus one. Might as well put that all in parentheses, make sure it gets calculated uh, in its order. Let's cl close that off. And we're going to add the second variance divided by the observations. And that needs to be squared. And that needs to be divided by the observations minus 1. Close parentheses there. Close parentheses there and just make sure that the order of operations is done correctly. We'll close the parentheses for the denominator, press equal, gives us 5.76, and our degrees of freedom is gonna be the numerator divided by the denominator, L26 divided by L27, and we get the degrees of freedom, 1517, which is the decimal form for that 15. If we put it in, if we made it a whole number, it would be 15. But now that gives us, let me move this over here. Now that gives us our t critical value of 
2.13, which you see here, it's 2.13. It pretty much coincides with that, right? So our T critical value here. So this is the other way that we can do it. If we wanted to do a little bit more manually, figure out the formulas, we have our T critical value, we have our T stat there, and this also tells us that the T stat value is greater than our T critical value, which says that we need to reject the null hypothesis. So there you go. There's the two ways that we can do a two sample T test and for unequal variances. And you can see that it incorporates the F test to help us figure out if we should use the equal variance portion, the equal variance selection in the data tools or the unequal variances selection. And I also showed you if you wanted to be a little more challenged, instead of having Excel spit it out for you here in this nice little table here, you can also figure it out with some of the formulas here. So I hope that helps.